Merry Christmas. Have yourself a Honda Civic Type R. Goof off all you want. What's the point of Honda if you cannot flaunt? 2017 Honda Civic Type R. Do you want to understand high schoolers? Well, if you want to understand high schoolers, understand this car. This is the current generation's Dodge Viper. In 1990X, the Viper was a car you'd go to war over to defend its honor. And in 2017, well, soon 2018, the Honda Civic Type R is a car the youth will go to war over. I recall a smoking tire episode where a guest got more and more flustered. He got more flustered than a ruffled grouse when Matt Farah said his Type R Civic loner was overheating on the track. And the podcast guest slid in with the, well, well, are you sure? Well, 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 what, what was the serial number? Well, 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 some of them had problems and they're fixed now. They're fixed now. They're all fixed now. They don't have problems. The Type R doesn't overheat. And Matt calmly said, Mine overheated. No, well, no, no, Type R's don't overheat. The guest shot back. All I'm telling you is what happened. I had the heater on full, the windows down, and the car overheated, said Matt. Well, 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 well no, you, you must have had an early production number. That Honda, the, the Honda didn't take it back yet because, because Type R's don't overheat. Now, I'm not throwing the podcast guest under the bus here. I'm merely demonstrating the emotional tumescence the Type R rises in the under 30 demographic, which really is folks who can't afford a $40,000 Civic. The Type R is a car you unlock when you complete the adulthood equivalent of the Turbo Tunnel from Battletoads. You get a Civic Type R because, yes, you want it, but at some level, you feel you deserve it. And that is what you've earned because you've achieved something in your life that allows you to have it. And it's probably less expensive than a trophy wife and would end up being, so all right. It's a Honda built for the track, <clears throat> kind of. This is exactly the type of thing that replaces video games once you're adult because dailying a Civic Type R is supposed to be more satisfying than getting your platinum trophy for the new Assassin's Creed. But here's the thing. The sporty track day reputation of the Civic Type R works against it when you're out here on the streets because the owner says people always stare at him. It's like he's driving some kind of Ferrari. In particular, he remembers one truck driver spotted him while driving and kept egging him on to go faster because there's an expectation that if you own this, then you want to break the law. You want to take it to track days. Otherwise, what's the damn point? There's an assumption that you must want to show off because owning a car like this is just a form of peacocking that exists within a certain budget. As far as hot hatches go, this has the critical favoritism more than its competitors like the Focus RS, WRX, STI, or the Golf R because the Civic Type R is the type of car whose reputation preceded it for a long time. Yeah, finally, we, they've combined a turbo and VTEC. Only took them 20 years. The 2017 Civic Type R was trumpeted as the fastest Honda ever sold in America, but also the car Motor Trend declared as arguably the best front-wheel drive sports car ever made. And that's a lot you have to live up to. But then, the Civic Type R feels like a car that was made to challenge the skeptics, to make people jealously mun mun under their breath about this jerk at the track day. With a car that can alter steering settings, okay, most cars can do that, and change throttle response at the drop of a hat, okay, most cars can do that, and retune the suspension on the fly, eh, most cars can do that. It's designed to draw your hatred, your envious stares, your whisper quiet curses. This car is what would happen if downloadable content were a car, because showing up at a track day in a Civic Type R pretty much tells everybody you've paid for the advantage. This isn't California. We're driving this on a 30 degree day in Pennsylvania. It's below freezing outside, which means there is no grip. Ah, uh, Pennsylvania winter is here. As for modifications, Elias had to install mud flaps to protect the paint from the gravel on the road in his area. He also removed the mufflers in the back since otherwise the exhaust was just too quiet for his taste. Eh. <sighs> 
But a more pressing concern is the transmission, which is already giving him problems. With a first to second gear crunch and a fifth to fourth gear lockout while downshifting. Yeah, in addition to overheating, manual type R's have transmission problems. He also has issues with the heat extractor under the hood, namely the Type R could use more heat extraction than Honda gives it, since this car really gets hot. Hell, it was, it was even warm during this shoot, it's below freezing outside. But in the grand scheme of things, I think people would give more weight to its track capabilities than the trouble it has on public roads. The owner has taken this Type R to three track days, and it was a beast each time. The 2-liter turbocharged inline 4 makes 306 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. Appearance-wise, there's a lot of angles in here. People call it handsome, although the white paint is neck and neck with black for the worst paint color you can get on a car. But it's hard to pass up taking advantage of the exclusive championship white color, which commemorates the color of Honda's first Formula One winner. Sure, the rear spoiler looks like it was designed by Cloud Stripe's hairdresser, and the headlights look like coke nails, but overall, it's a lean, angry-looking design for lean, angry Eddie Bravo types who move the goalposts in every argument. This is what a car like that is supposed to look like. Maybe this isn't your thing, maybe it creeps you out like a grown man singing The Little Drummer Boy in your youth choir. Ugh. But at the end of the day, this is a Honda through and through, and it mostly delivers on its expectations, even if you're the type of driver who rather not be hassled by other motorists about living up to any of them. Do I like it? Mm-hmm. Huh. The Honda Civic Type R is superior to the Ford Focus RS in every category except performance and handling. <laughs> the Focus RS is a wooden bleacher seat crashing through your neighborhood at Warp Factor Dick. The Focus RS is too fast for the real world, even though it has all-wheel drive. The front-wheel drive, Civic Type R, makes about 50 horsepower less, with 300 less cubic centimeters of displacement. The Type R's seats are softer, the bolstering is less aggressive, and the engine is quieter, and visibility is better. In form over user interface, the body kit or side skirting is just large enough that every dingus who isn't you and whom you let drive your car is going to hit the bodywork with the heels of their shoes and scuff it up as they sit in. Less power, sure, but I'll have the Type R over the Focus RS because you can goof off safely in this car. Spin the tires in first, second, third, fourth gear. Honda, you haven't forgotten your roots and I love you for that. Race around the Skookle Mall parking lot like a Drift King and then wear a halo on your way out. Oh, it wasn't me. It was a fucking Mustang. He's trying to sneak out the back way. And everybody will believe you. Civic Type R. The vehicular equivalent of my own worst enemy by lit. Type R. You may be 40 G's, but you're still a car for a weed dealer named Jason who cuts his cush with rosemary. Jason isn't even your guy, but your guy is doing 18 months for having an eighth on him while tagging the Buttonwood Street Bridge. Type R. Brought to you by throwing your wireless controller against the wall, ripping off your headset, and yelling four-letter words until your mom signs you back up for family therapy. Civic Type R. The official car of your girl saying, ha, Okay, okay, you proved your point. <laughs> okay, Adam. Okay, okay. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Adam, Adam, slow down. Adam, I'm, not, I'm asking you nicely to slow down. Please, please, slow down. Slow, <laughs> slow down. <laughs> Here's something interesting. When you're not using the multi-function display screen, it turns off. No distractions. No silly San Francisco rush turbo boost, boost meters going on here. Nothing but gauges. Just sweet blackness, which is also the name of my fleshlight. But I think the Civic Type R is rooted so much in video games, we're gonna have to see patches for this car as the months roll in the years. This car wasn't ready for the real world. Transmission problems and heating problems. Right out the bat. Honda, this isn't you. I mean, it is you. This is fun all the time. And you know what? It's comfortable. It's a better touring car than a Focus RS. And honestly, even a WRX STI. It's a bit of a stretch to get in, but it's all right to drive every single day. And you can. You're supposed to. It's a Honda. But man, transmission problems? The first year? Well... 
Now the AW11 had fifth gear pop out before they fixed that with the Mark 1B, so I can't get too mad at Honda for that. But in cold weather like this, mmm, nope, all it does is spin. Kind of fun. You can rip it right through these gears. It is just enough horsepower to be too much horsepower for a front-wheel drive car. And that's why it's great. It's just that one click over the line that can still be fun a little bit too much, but fun a little bit too much, fun but a little bit too much every single day. All right, that's it. Time for Boilo. Time to get off this wagon. Through the years, we'll see. Happy holidays, everyone.